Thanks again for everything, Atmos. You're quite welcome, my child. Hello, Paul. Paul, you're there for what? You don't hear Atmos talking to you. Huh? Hello, Atmos. You seem to have a lot on your mind today. Yeah, he's been walking around with that long face all day. Well, what's troubling you, Paul? It's nothing. If it was nothing, you'd be doing something more interesting rather than moping around filling up the potholes in the road. Come on. You never know. Maybe I can help. Nobody can help. My father has been in trend. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Wait a minute. What's going on okay. here? I don't understand. I think the easiest way for you to understand is that your father isn't working anymore. Paul, what's Chaplin is he talking? Daddy goes to work every day. No, he doesn't. Well, how come he gets up early and dresses in his suit and tie then? Because he doesn't want us to know. And Atlas, I feel so bad. Because mm. mommy and daddy bought us these expensive gifts. And they now they can't bring granny home for Christmas. I don't believe it. Well, I better hide because it's true. I know how you feel, my boy. But instead of wallowing in sorrow, maybe there's some way you can help your father. Me? Atlas, my paper route and he pays $20 a week. There's no way that can help bring granny home for Christmas. And in any case, Christmas is only a few days away. No, no, child. I don't mean that way. Don't you still ask your parents for money sometimes? Uh, sometimes. Yeah, things are expensive these days. Well, now, you can help your parents by making that $20 do for all of your needs and Leslie's. You will just have to follow a strict budget like your parents and not put any extra financial strain on them by asking for things that aren't really necessary. But at last, there are some things a girl just cannot do without, and Paul's money will never be enough. You heard Atlas, it will do, and don't go asking Daddy about his job and granny. We're not supposed to know. Okay. In the meantime, let's see some smiles on those faces. After all, it's Christmas, and who knows, anything can happen if you believe in the magic of Christmas. <laughs> In the meantime, the claws at us. We too old for that. We passed that stage already. Anyway, children, I want you to remember something and carry it with you for the rest of your lives. You're never too old to believe in the magic of Christmas. Anyway, children, I've got to be on my way. See you tomorrow. Bye, Bye children. Hi, Pumpkin. How are you? Do you need any help, Daddy? Yes, just some groceries and a box. You can manage it? Uh huh, no problem. So, you're all ready to help Mommy and I with the pastas this afternoon? Oh, I'm ready for eating them. You eat pots? Leslie, watch what you're doing now. You're putting too much oil. Look, mommy. It's okay, Paul. I put some extra brown paper right there. But he is right, Leslie. You are using too much oil. Okay. Madge, I'm nearly finished rolling these balls. Is there anything else I can do? Well, you can tie the ones I've already filled. Leslie. Yes, mommy. Pass this to your father. Are we starting to tie already? Yes, daddy's starting right now. It's too bad Granny couldn't make it back in time for pastel making nights. She used to let me help her time. By the way, Dad, when... <laughs> Children, I have some really bad news for you. Granny will not be coming again to Christmas. Oh, I miss her. Me too. 
more commercials I can. Gosh, we we'll never see the end of this show if we keep up like this. You would have known that dollar rescues we save when things hard. Them people just buy almost anything. And the nice part about them, you can always buy them back when things get better. Where this place is? Right on the eastern main road in Mongo. So this woman forward them to the rescue. It's only me. Paul, what happened to you, Tolly? Matter what? Shh. I have an idea for getting some money to get Granny home for Christmas. Remember, Atna said that you can help Mommy and Daddy by giving up some of the things you would like to have? Yeah. Well, we could sell our Christmas presents. You know that place they advertise on TV? Dollar Rescue? Well, you could take them there. But Paul, I've waited a whole year for those pong puppies. Who would you rather have for Christmas? Granny or some old stupid pong puppies? Granny, of course, but okay. First chance to get tomorrow, we'll get the gifts and go down to Dollar Rescue, okay? Okay. $250? Wow! Now we'll give Daddy the money and Granny will be home for Christmas. Don't be silly. We just can't give it to him. Why not? Because he's going to feel bad when he finds out that we know he's out of work. So how will he get it then? We have to put it in a place where he'll find it and think that it was money he lost a long, long time ago. Yeah, but where? Uh, I know. Come on, let's go. Jed, how are you going? I'm okay, I guess. Well, you sure don't sound so. Daddy and I had a serious talk last night. We have to move. Why? Well, he just said it was a waste of money for only the two of us to be living in such a big house. Where are you going to live then? I don't know. So how are you going? Boy, a lot has happened. First, Granny was supposed to be coming from Miami for Christmas. Then she wasn't. Now she's coming again. Does this have anything to do with your father being out of a job? Sort of, but it's a long story. Leslie and I fixed it so Granny could be able to come. By the way, I didn't mean to be spiteful when I told you about your father being out of a job. And I'm really very sorry. That's okay. Daddy will get another job and we're going to have a great time with Granny here. So how did you manage to get your Granny home for Christmas? Leslie and I managed to raise a whole $250, which I'm sure is more than enough for her airfare. Paul, I... Uh, no, I can't tell you. I don't want to disappoint you again. Come on, Jared. What is it? Well, a return ticket from Miami costs over $500. Oh, no. Okay. Bye. Hi, Pumpkin. What did you just... How are you? You're in a good mood today. That I am. Man, God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you display. Remember yeah, Christ right. our Savior, born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's partner, we have gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Comfort and joy, oh tidings of comfort and joy. Yeah, funny. Thank you, thank you. Wait a minute, where's, where's Paul? I don't know, he was just on the phone. I'll go get him. 
Okay, what's the big surprise? You got a job. You betcha I did. I got a job. Come on, be serious. Where? Ah, you are now looking at the new managing director of the Tate Group of Companies. How? Oh. Huh. It was all quite weird, actually. Here I was waiting on a red light on the corner of French Street and Arapita Avenue, and up comes this... You know that strange character the children are always talking about? You mean that nurse? Yeah. Oh, by the way, Marge, I don't think it's such a good idea to have the children spend so much time with him. He doesn't seem to be too um, well up there, if you know what I mean. He's know. a little strange, yes, but he's not a nurse. So what happened next? Well. Here I am, and he comes up and he says, don't go down French Street because there's a traffic jam on Rison Road. Anyway, I had 10 minutes to my next appointment, and I said, let me take his advice. So I'm driving along Arapita Avenue, and the gentleman in front comes to a sudden halt. I had to jam on my brakes, but the gentleman behind me wasn't as alert. He slammed into me. Well, anyway, it wasn't too bad because he turned out to be a very good friend of mine. Larry from college. I haven't seen him in years. Anyway, he is a major shareholder in Tate Group of Companies. We started talking and next thing I know, he offered me a job. <laughs> I couldn't believe it was happening. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> oh. Paul, where are you, Paul? Paul, daddy's home. He's looking for you. Why are you lying down here in the dark? It's only half past six. It's nothing. Go away. Oh, for Pete's sake, what's wrong now? Tomorrow is Christmas Eve and Granny will be coming. No, she won't. And what does that mean? I'm sure Daddy has found the money by now. But it isn't enough. I was just talking to Jared and he said a return ticket for Miami cost over $500. So you mean I gave up my punk for beast for nothing? Not really. But I guess Daddy will make good use of it, like buying groceries or something. Poor, this is gonna be some dread Christmas. By the way, can you take me to see the puppies tomorrow? Sure, no problems. Marge. Yeah. Can you get me some cream pajamas, please? Okay. Marge, have you got them? Yeah. Hey there. Huh? Honey. Mm -hmm. You lose any money recently? No, not that I can remember. Why? I just found two hundred and fifty dollars in the cupboard with your pajamas. <laughs> That's strange. I don't usually keep any money in here. Let me see. What are you thinking about? You can you help me get the suitcase down from here? Yeah, no problem. Might be my last chance to wrap it around just before Christmas. There's nothing in here. What are you talking about? There must be. Come, bring it here. <laughs> but I don't understand. I put them there when I bought them last month. Wendell, do you think someone could have stolen them? No, don't jump to conclusions, Marge. There must be some reasonable explanation. Is there anything else missing? No, not that I know of. The locks are not broken. No. But what else could have happened? I am not crazy, you know. I know I put them there. Well, since the house isn't broken into, then I think this is what Kojak would call an inside job. You mean the children? But they would never do something like this. I mean, I know they always look for their gifts and sometimes even find them, but they would never interfere with them before Christmas. I think this has something to do with it. How? Think. Did you let it slip up? No. They must have found out somehow. And I have a pretty good idea that the disappearance of the gifts had something to do with the appearance of this money. And if I'm right, you know, Marge, I think we have some wonderful kids here. We'll have to make it up to them. Oh, you better call your mother before she catches in that ticket.
I hope you have more luck today in locating insurance presents. Yesterday, everywhere I went, the world sold out. Well, if we don't get them today, we could always order them from one of the stores and get children something simple in the meantime. Boy, I can't wait to see the look on their faces when they're granny comes. We have a spoil. We don't want to spoil the surprise now, do we? Good morning. Good morning, my big son. You're back earlier than usual. I didn't bother to go by drug because of the rain and I wanted to make an early start on my chores. Oh my gosh. I knew things were bad, but I didn't think they were this bad. What is that? Mutin and Bart then receive the ship. What? You didn't see it? No, I better call John. They think I didn't come back this morning because of this. I told you they knew I was out of the job. Otherwise, by now, he would have asked a million questions. Hello, children. What brought you out this way? I just took lesson to see the puppies at the Gibsons. Oh, and how are they coming along, little one? Fine. Well, they may be fine, but you two don't look so good. What's the matter? Haven't you heard? This is the season to be jolly. We tried at this. We really did. But for us, all the magic has gone out of this Christmas. Not even my best friend, Jared McLean, wants to talk to me on the phone. How come? I think he thinks I didn't go over to his house this morning because of the bad news about his father's company in the papers. Oh, I see. Well, I think things will sort itself out as soon as you get a chance to talk with him. Come on, cheer up. Here, help me with this card. Let me help too. Sure. There's the cloth. Didn't your father tell you that I... Uh, uh, tell us what? Uh, At first, what was I supposed to tell us? I mean, I, I'm sure that things will sort itself out. Uh, there, you missed a spot uh, right here. <laughs> Welcome home, Mom. Ah, son, it's so good to be home. <laughs> wow. I hope you're treating my daughter good, you know. She's the only one I have. Of course I am, Mom. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, Moms, I am so glad we caught you before you cashed in that ticket. I was waiting and praying that things would work out. Anyway, enough of this. Let us get in and get the Christmas started. Let me help you. I can manage. I can manage. Yes, ma'am. Jesus, what is your inside here? And then, you go worry about that. You love getting in touch with Gerald? <laughs> Children, I think that's your father. You must need some help, Bunsi. Okay, Mom. Go on. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on, Home, sweet home. Ah, 
Uh, if this old neck was good, I would bend down and kiss the ground. <laughs> I got some oh drinks. Um, uh, punch can for you, mom? Sure, thanks. <laughs> Me too. I'll try that. So, Fanny, how was it? Oh, not too bad. There was a bit of confusion in the beginning. Imagine they put this old girl of a granny in the smoking section of the plane. Ah. <laughs> Matt, you expecting anyone? No. No, we like it. I was wondering Thank you. 
go on his face. I want a drink. Just follow me. Go ahead. Yes. This is from mommy and daddy. I'm just saying to you. And this is from Paul. And this is from. That's not yours. It's mine from Auntie Sheila. Oh, good. This is this one is for you. I hope you like it. That's okay. Have you opened any of your presents yet? Yes, one. It's in my bed. Come on, let's go and see it. Nelson, what I mean? Oh, you must know him. He does odd jobs around the neighborhood. You must have seen him with the Scott. He's always around. Uh -oh. What I mean? When Daddy lost his job and the whole world seemed to be falling apart, Atlas told us to help Mummy and Dad anywhere we could and to believe in the magic of Christmas. At first, things didn't seem to be working out. But see, Granny's here and Daddy has a new job. You all have been very fortunate. Ah, ha! I knew I would have found you all in here. Oh no! What you want? I don't want anything. So you sure you don't fit the t-shirt again, eh? Dad, I have one too, you know. Well, why I can't go and show it off to the other girls? Right now, Jerry and I are busy. We are not that busy. You can say if you like. Am I hearing right? Are you actually trying to be nice, Jerry McLean? Leslie, how could you say such a thing? No, Paul, she's right. I've been a real stucker brat. Jordan, she... It's okay, I... Paul. With all that has been happening, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And if I were Leslie, I wouldn't like me either. I haven't been good to either of you. Paul, I've taken advantage of you and I'm sorry. That's okay. This problem with your father's company, I'm sure everything will work itself out. Atlas's solution to trouble times can work for anybody, and it doesn't have to be at Christmas time either. Maybe you can tell me to see him sometime. Sure. Wait! Hear that! You might be able to meet him now. Atlas! Atlas! <laughs> Hello, Paul! Come on inside, we're having a party. I I'm sorry, I've got to decline. Uh, you see, I've got so much work to do. But nobody works on Christmas Eve. I don't know about anyone else, but I do. Bye now. Bye. Merry Christmas. See you soon. Bye, Atnas. Wait. Look at that. What? Let me see. Let me see. Atnas's name spelled backwards is S A N T A. Santa. Thanks. The time that will remind you that love can always guide you.